Do you think I had a choice? Over my dead body. Yes, I bet you have. Oh, ho, ho. greetings once again, Bucketheads, Mayvar Tigar. Welcome to the 89th Aura Sing song alonging episode of Mandovision. Nargai Tom, and thank you so much for checking out this small, independent Star Wars podcast. Remember, the best way to reach out to us is via social media, at Mando underscore Vision on Twitter and Instagram. You can email the show, MandovisionTom at gmail.com. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share the show with all the other Mandalorians in your covert. And hey, if you're there and you want to support the show, if you're on Apple Podcasts, sweet, sweet, sweet five-star reviews. Critical for getting this, the word out about what we do here on Mandavision. And spread the word about small independent podcasts just like us by giving those five-star reviews. We thank you so much in advance for your efforts. Oh, we got one for you today. I'm really excited about this. And it's it's time for a little bit of a kind of kind of a confession time. The next few weeks of Star Wars: The Clone Wars rewatch Mondays, I have taped taped. I have recorded well in advance because uh, I will be on a vacation for a duration of time in September. And while I am looking forward to it, I am I was not looking forward to to not having a podcast ready to go for all the fine people who take take the time. And download and listen to every episode that I do. So I am a bit ahead of, of things, which is good, which is, a good, which is a good problem to be in. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to have content to share while I am away and not actively recording. So if there is any big breaking Star Wars news while I'm gone, uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to get into that until I get back. So I'm, I'm assuming that means that while I'm on vacation, they will drop trailers for Andor, Kenobi, Book of Boba Fett all in a big block, and I'll have to wait two weeks or something like that to come back and talk about it uh, with all you fine, fine listeners out there, because that's kind of the way things roll. I'm unavailable, and that's when all the news breaks. So, so exciting times, I suppose. But if you get those trailers, at least you have something to look forward to when I do get back from vacation. Uh, so th- again, that being said, the next bunch of weeks are recorded, ready to go, uh, and you, you will hear me talk about something that we're actually doing right now. So I, I believe it's actually on Monday's episode where I, I say, we're going to talk about Aura Sing down the road in a special episode. Well, that's what we're listening to today. Today is that special episode. So I, I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, I didn't quite have my calendar lined up the way I thought I would. I thought this Friday's show was going to be a little bit different initially. Uh, but the way things kind of fell, I was like, well, let's just do the Aura Sing episode today. And that's exactly what we're doing. We have our special Aura Sing Along, or as I can, am sometimes calling it, the Aura Sing Song Along and if you know what a song along is, maybe you'll appreciate that reference. If you don't, we can just go with sing along. That's fine too. So, so get ready because we're going to talk about Aura Sing because that's what was coming up as we as we close out season two of Star Wars: The Clone Wars. We're spending time in the Young Boba Fett trilogy, and Aura Sing is a big, big part of that episode or of of that arc, I should say, as as she sort of becomes this um, sort of foster maternal figure for Boba Fett. She may not see herself as that, but Boba. I think does see her as that. And so it's, there's some interesting stuff in those episodes and we talk about them on those episodes, but I wanted to provide a little background in case anyone needed a refresher on who Ara Singh is. And, and uh, again, we, as this is the main division podcast and I am old, we will talk about the old Canon, the expanded universe that is no more and Ara Singh's role in that, because I thought Ara's role in the old Canon was insanely interesting. Very, very good stuff in there. Uh, did all of it land? Man, maybe not. There's there's some stuff that wasn't great, but by and large, I loved what they did with Ara Singh, uh, in the, in particularly in the in the Dark Horse comic books. 
Uh, they they use her very very well in Star Wars: The Clone Wars. So do not think I'm I'm saying that they've done a disservice to the character, but her origins are much more streamlined uh, in in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, and we'll talk about some of those differences, and and you can decide for yourselves which version of Ara you maybe like better. Character wise, Ara is basically the same. It's her origins that are that are very very different, and and we will talk about those. But you know what you got to do first before we get into the episode proper. There's one key element you have to do. You know what it is. It's time. Strap on your buckets. Let's go. What's that? Oh, you're going to love this. Come, come. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, this is a song along. A song along? Have you been to a song along? No. Let's talk about Aura Sing. Again, one of, one of my favorite things to talk about on this podcast is the sort of... Um, um, Going back and revisiting the versions of these characters that existed prior to the Disney acquisition of Lucasfilms, and basically, basically even before that, it, this, it's really prior to the existence of Star Wars: The Clone Wars, the animated show, the animated film, everything that that spawned from that feature film, and from uh, Lucas wanting to wanting to go back and revisit that era between Episodes two and three. A lot of things were changed, and a lot of things kind of got thrown out the window from the expanded universe, uh, particularly. Uh, the, the Dark Horse comics were probably the most strongly affected by this because they were spending a lot of time in that, that period. They, they, uh, they had comic books coming out monthly during the Clone Wars, before the Clone Wars, uh, kind of chronicling all this stuff when Lucasfilm didn't have any interest in doing it. So they were the ones who, who you know, brought ARC Troopers to us and, and showed us different battles on Seleucami and, and going on to all the different uh, fronts of the Clone Wars and really did a really nice job of chronicling the struggle of the Jedi and the clones against the Separatists. And, and uh, they had the battle for Kamino in there before, long before the Clone Wars ever did it. You know, there's a lot of really great stuff in that comic book series from Dark Horse if you can find the original issues. Uh, I, I don't think the bulk of them are available through Marvel anymore. They ha- I don't think Marvel's collected all of those. So if you want to find them, you will have to go and, and do some hunting to track them down. But they are really, really good comic books, especially, if, I mean, just from, from a Star Wars fan perspective, you, you want to get into that. So let's let's talk about the, the, the version of Aura Singh that we're going to meet on Monday when we do Star Wars The Clone Wars Rewatch. And, and we start, and again, she doesn't show up in this until the very, very end, but she is part of this young Boba Fett trilogy. And we get to see her relationship with young Boba. In this version of the continuity, uh, her species has a name. That's not true in, in the old continuity. It did not, and I'm going to say it wrong. It's a as a Paladuvian is her species, and she was her homeworld is considered Narshada, which is the Smuggler's Moon. You probably all know that. And before we see her in these episodes with Boba Fett, you you may remember she is part of Cad Bane's gang that storms the Senate in the effort to free Zero the Hut from, from Republic custody. So she's part of that. You might, you know, visually we see her in that episode. I think she has a couple lines of dialogue. But this time we get to spend a lot more time with her, and we get to see how cold and ruthless she is. And it's, it's an interesting take, it, it, not an interesting take on the character. It's a good take on the character. It's consistent with the version that we knew before that. Uh, for anyone who's forgotten, Aura makes her first appearance in episode one. In The Phantom Menace, she's on a balcony overlooking the the Boonta Eve classic as Anakin is racing against, you know, all the other pod racers. Um, and and that that's our first glimpse of her. And the the they sort of wanted to do like a female Boba Fett for just like background character. Uh, one of the many, 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 many background characters that they were creating for The Phantom Menace. And Aura was one of them. She got a, a fairly prominent shot of herself uh, watching the Boonta Eve pod race and from there you know it's star wars by this point in in the expanded universe every background character had had a short story told about them uh, why they were in the cantina on Mos Eisley, why they were in jabba's palace on on the day that luke skywalker arrived you know all these things like we we had explored so many background characters the background characters had become very very important to star wars fans and and so lucas knowing that threw in a bunch of really interesting vi- visually interesting ones to speak of you know, and we talked about that on our Quinlan Voss episode. How Quinlan Voss is actually you can actually see him in the Phantom Menace. There is a background character that has the very distinct look that would become Quinlan Voss. Now, Lucas didn't intend for that to be Quinlan Voss, 
the artist just saw this character for a split second and was like, that's our guy. This Jedi that we're creating, that's who it is. He's on Tatooine. He's undercover. He's on a secret mission. And they, they, they put him in the movie. They made it happen. I mean, he was in the movie, but they put him in the movie, if you know what I'm trying to say. So Dark Horse, knowing, knowing all this stuff, they're, 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 they're going to spin a web for Aura Singh. And we're going to talk about the, the old expanded universe after we talk about the new canon, the, the, the stuff that we get to see her in. Because remember, we are focused on the Clone Wars and this version that we're spending time with on the Clone Wars. And that's basically who you get. This is very much... Every episode we see her in is her canon, her true, true canon, as far as that goes. She has appearances in the Darth, uh, the Darth Maul comic book that was published by Marvel a few years back. She's working with Cad Bane. They meet with, with Maul. They have a plan. They have a plot. And then, you know, after Star Wars The Clone Wars is done, she doesn't pop up in Rebels. The next time we get an Aura Singh mention is in the Solo film, where uh, Lando Calrissian mentions that Tobias Beckett is the one who killed Aura Singh. And, and Lando thanks him because he owed Aura Singh a lot of money. And it's really interesting stuff. Because the juxtaposition, of course, is Aura Singh had a crazy deep background created for her in the comic books. She was much more a part of uh, being in the mix for the galactic, you know, in the, in the galactic wars, you know. And, and it's, it's, it's really interesting because I was, as I was kind of up, updating my, my base of information, you know, I was, I was kind of going through her, the, the canonized appearances of Aura, and it's not as many as I remember it being. You know, after, after her run with the, with the in, in, in um, like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight episodes of The Clone Wars, you know, she's mentioned in a few books, uh, again, that Darth Maul comic from 2017, which is a good comic, by the way. Please check it out. But yeah, not a, not a much, lot, of, not a lot else about her is, is is considered canon anymore, and I think that's unfortunate. You know, again, her personality is very much the same as the old universe, so that's all intact, which is good. I, I don't think I would have liked a drastic change in her personality and who she is. I like her as the, the cold, relentless bounty hunter, merciless. You know. All about, you know, getting getting the money, finishing the mission, accomplishing what she's out to do, and and again, like I said, that part holds true. That part stays intact. But what we get from the comic books in the old canon is a much fuller character, and one with a lot more connections to our heroes than maybe we would have thought at the time. So it's it's really interesting to think about it in that regards. I, I don't I don't want to say that Aura Singh in, in canon is basic, but she's sort of underutilized. And I would sort of I think I would really like it if they were to go back and flesh her out more in the canon. Uh, because as I'm going to tell you, there's a lot more potential for her just based on what existed in in the in the old Dark Horse comic books and in some of her other appearances in, in other pieces of, of uh, property because uh, she shows up in some of the novels as well. Someone's later in the novels. So, you know, so canon and canonized, Aura Singh dies at some point before A New Hope. In the old canon, the expanded universe, Aura Singh was operating well past Return of the Jedi and, and had adventures and encounters with uh, the Solos and the Skywalkers and, and uh, you know, not just Anakin Skywalker, I'm talking about like Luke Skywalker and, and Leia. You know, it's, it's the character who operated for a long time period of time in the old canon and, and so she's been cut uh, in my opinion unceremoniously short in the new canon if if I put this in their big capital I F if Tobias Beckett really did kill Aura Singh which apparently the galaxy thinks but maybe that's what Aura Aura excuse me wants him to think so let's let's plant that seed that maybe Aura Singh is not dead it's just She's allowing people to think she's dead because maybe she decided she needed to lay low. No one's refuted Solo yet. As far as we know, the end of Aura's story, story in canon is Tobias Beckett. And maybe that holds, maybe it doesn't. We'll have to see about that. But yeah, let, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Aura Singh in the old canon because I want to talk... I want to talk. Actually, before I do that, I want to, I want to mention one more similarity between the two versions of, of Aura, which is um, sort of the key, a, a key element, is not knowing who her father is. You know, and her mom's not a great person either. But 
she doesn't have a father figure. And again, that whatever you believe the ramifications of that, that's your beliefs and that's fine. But that's one of the things that kind of crosses over between her. Now, as I mentioned, in canon, she has a species. She is Paladuvin. In the old canon, does not have a species. She's listed as a human hybrid. So her father being, her not knowing her father leads to a lot of questions about her origins. Like, you know, what people is she from? And her being extremely unique in the galaxy, not, you know, from a, from a visual perspective at the very least. You know, again, her, her appearance is the same at both sides. That alabaster white skin, the shock of red ponytail at the back, the antenna, all that stuff is, is on point, on brand. Uh, one of the things I want to mention about her appearance that, that I've always, I'm, I'm going to mention this, and it might sound weird, but I wanted to mention this and get you all's opinion on it because it's something that I've always, I don't know. Ara Singh's fingers, they're really long, and they're kind of like a spidery, crab leggy looking fingers, right? So particularly when you see her in the upcoming episodes on Star Wars The Clone Wars on our Rewatch Mondays, when you see her fingers, there's a couple shots of her putting her hand in her fingers on Boba Fett's cheek and, and, and kind of a gentle caressing, perhaps a manipulation for you to decide. But look at her fingers. They so remind me of the legs on the face hugger in Alien and in Aliens. I, it, the, the way it's segmented, the, the whole the, and obviously the alabaster white skin probably helps add to that allure a little bit. Very face huggery type fingers on Aura Singh. Very uh, 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 arachnid, I suppose, in a way. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Long fingers, they weird me out. They weird me out a little bit. Let's put it that way. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead. And now is when we're going to talk about some of the old Expanded Universe stuff with Ara Singh and why I think, in just my personal opinion, the Expanded Universe version of Ara Singh is the superior Ara Singh. So this time in the Expanded Universe... Again, a difference of this Ara Singh is, again, we, we don't have a species name for her, just a, a human hybrid. We know that she's in, in the expanded universe. Again, that's where I'm focusing right now. I'll try to make any differences clear. Uh, but Ara Singh, born to a spice-addicted mother. We don't know her father. That's why she's a hybrid. We don't know what his species is. So that's why she has a very distinct look. And she's very unique in that regards across the galaxy. She apparently, at least according to... This information that we have, she's like a one of a kind. There's nobody else like Ara Singh in the galaxy. She also has a different name, Nashta. And at one point, she was taken in for Jedi training. She was determined to have Force sensitivity and Force abilities. And she was going to be trained to become a Jedi. But this Ara Singh never made it out of being a Padawan. She was assigned a Jedi Master named the Dark Woman. And the Dark Woman is a was sort of a mysterious master in the comic books. Uh, one of these ones who sort of towed the line between the light and the dark. And th that was kind of a common theme with some of the more mysterious Jedi that they had in the comic books at the time. Like we talked about uh, Master Thome for, for Qu Quinlan Voss, who was very much the same way. He would spend a lot of time studying the dark ways of the Force, the dark side of the Force, and, and even some Sith mythology. Uh, the Dark Woman is much the same way. But apparently Aura and the Dark Woman could not get along. They could not forge that bond between Master and Padawan that is so essential to a Padawan growing and developing into a Jedi Knight. Uh, eventually, uh, Aura does not move past Padawan, and she is uh, subsequently kidnapped by pirates, who then make her a pirate, and, and she starts to forge this new path as a pirate. Part of the reason why she can't become a Padawan, why she doesn't, doesn't progress, the anger that she has inside of her. She is is just overwhelmingly angry all the time. So it's it's it's, it's not even anger. It's it's an aggressiveness, I should say. Aura Singh is an aggressive personality. We see that in the Clone Wars, and we see that very strongly in her, her prior existence in the expanded universe, in the comics, in the novel appearances that she made. Uh and her life is full of tragedies, not just because of, of, of her mother and her father, but this failure with the Jedi and then being kidnapped by pirates and then being kidnapped again, this time by by a hut, a hut gang kidnaps her. And then they lend her to uh, the Anzadi. We did not talk about the Anzadi during our Quinlan episode, but the Anzadi assassins are, are 
So the Anzadi basically have a, have a Hatfield and McCoy situation going on with Quinlan's people in the comic books. So we, we haven't talked much about the Anzadi, but they are cold, ruthless assassins, basically. And now that Ara Singh has been loaned to them by, the, by this, hut, uh, this hut lord, uh, Walanuga, that's the name of the hut, she gets trained by the Anzadi, and they basically train her to become remorseless killing machine that, that we know and love. And according to the old lore, they are the ones who, who outfit her with that biocomputer, which is like the antenna that she has coming out of her head. We know that in, in Star Wars The Clone Wars animated series, that's mostly a comm device. Uh, but in this, in the old canon, it's, it's to aid her in sensory data for tracking prey and, and, and doing bounty hunting work. Things like that. Now, what is really good about this, because once as, once she gets away from the anxiety, she goes out on her own, becomes a bounty hunter. But more interesting about this character at this point is she becomes a bounty a hunter of Jedi. She goes after Jedi targets. You know, between the anxiety and the, the the pirates that had her before that, I'm sorry, the, the Senex slavers, excuse me, who, who originally kidnapped her after being washed out as a Padawan. So she has like this just this, this awful upbringing, and and between these horrible people just beating the beating the it, what little good may have been in her out of her. Yeah. So in in it's a, as the Anzadi twist her feelings on the Jedi, the Senex slavers twist her feelings on the Jedi, make her feel abandoned, make her feel that she was let go by them, that they rejected her, and they're able to sort of mold this young woman into this remorseless killer. And again, she becomes a hunter of Jedi. This is like one of her specialties as a bounty hunter. A hunter of Jedi who has force powers. Pretty deadly combination. Uh, we see her show up in the comic books. She, she fights uh, Sharad Het on Tatooine. She, there are, uh, she attempts to kill Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon, obviously before the Phantom Menace. There's, there's a lot of really good stuff with her. Uh, prior to the events of Phantom Menace, and then after the events of Phantom Menace, because she does become part of that comic book uh, that takes place in that Clone Wars period. Because particularly she begins to uh, work for Count Dooku. He, she, she becomes one of his assassins. So political assassination is in her, her repertoire as well. And that's how Dooku likes to, to employ her and, and deploy her in an effort to uh, uh, silence political rivals. Now, her mythology in the in the in the during the clone wars gets a little muddied um because again the the two canons clash and then that's why we have to pull these things apart and why we have to talk about them but i, I like that aura has more of a background in the story do you i don't know how you all feel about her being a jedi do you like that for this character do you think it's an interesting idea a scene what happens when someone doesn't become a jedi you know like they the, the jedi sort of turn their back on you once you once you sort of wash out and all of a sudden you're, you you know how to use the force maybe you can't control it but you seem to know enough that you could be hard be dangerous but they just turn you out into the street and they're like yeah you know what never mind you know i i feel like that's irresponsible the jedi like maybe the maybe those are the ones you shape into a librarian or something like that so that uh you know where the dangerous people are and you don't just have like crazy force wielders out there uh and you, and you hope they just you know play in their garden and don't get into any trouble and again aura has a backstory of tragedy you know the parental issues washed out by washed out and abandoned by the jedi senex slavers captured by a hut crime lord and then sent to and the anzadi assassins who are cruel and merciless and they shape her to be that way too so a, a pawn of a lot of people and, and at a certain point she turns against that doesn't want to be a pawn she decides she's going to be the one to control her fate, control her destiny. And because she is Force-sensitive, it makes her a, a formidable adversary for the Jedi in the Clone Wars. Uh, and I suspect a lot of the reasons why they kept using her in the Clone Wars comic book is because they could do whatever they wanted at that point. You know, they the Dark Horse had carte blanche. They could tell these stories because Lucas wasn't going to be doing anything during episodes between episodes 2 and 3. This was a ripe area, a ripe playground, ripe fruit for the plucking, if you will. I kept saying ripe, but I wasn't finishing the metaphor. Ripe fruit for the plucking. So so Dark Horse did stuff with Ara Singh, and they made her fantastic and fun. And, you know, not 
<laughs> not a good person. They kept her bad. You know, there was not really ever a moment where you're like, oh my god, is Aura Singh going to do like do a do a go, you know do a, do a turn and go baby face? No, 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 no. Aura stayed pretty bad pretty much the entire time. And maybe my memory on that's a bit foggier than than it should be, but I don't remember there ever being like the last temptation of Aura Singh, especially once she was already hunting and killing uh, Jedi Knights and Padawans and and. Uh, one of the one of the quotes I wrote down from from Aura Singh, I was going to read to you here. It's there is no one like me in the galaxy. I am justice. I am the bane of the Jedi. I haunt the dreams of their padawans. I will drink your fear and spill your blood, and my hate will scar the galaxy. I am Aura Singh. It's pretty good, pretty good stuff. I I don't remember. I didn't write down where I found it. It was just one of the things I came across on the internet. And I was like, oh, I wish I knew what comic that was from. But <laughs> but there's it's it's good stuff. R is a fascinating character, and I, again, I, I hate to say it, I think she gets a little shortchanged in the new canon. But it's cool that they include her in the canon, and there's plenty of opportunity for them to do something. As we as we set up, I gave an option that she just allows Tobias Beckett to think that he killed her, let him gain a reputation for that, and she can lay low and do something else, and then pop up down the road later on. Now Beckett's dead now, so perfect time for her to pop back up. Show up in Solo too. Hashtag make Solo 2 happen. Or, more more better, more more better, more, <laughs> more to what I want, make a Solo 2 happen as a Disney Plus show. I've been saying it for almost three years now. Solo 2 as a Disney Plus show focused on the underworld, on the bounty hunters, on the crime lords, on these syndicates. Make it happen. I want it now. So yeah, that, that's a little bit more of the background on, on Aura Singh. Do you like her better as kind of like the blank slate that we have in Star Wars The Clone Wars? Because... Again, it, there, it's not too late to go back in and add stuff to her mythology now and make it official. You know, we do have the entire new book series going on. They're adding things, new layers, new everything to to many aspects of the Star Wars timeline. You know, a lot of it seems to be focused on uh, pre-Empire, you know, post-Clone Wars pre-Empire. There seems to be a lot of development in that area right now between, between uh, the Bad Batch and the novels that I've been reading, you know, whether it's uh, Sith Lords or Tarkin or, or, you know, the Battlefront books, there seems to be a lot of focus on, on, on filling out the time in that space. Not a lot of people are going back into the Clone Wars period to, to, to flesh anything else out. I think I think that is, I think it's only a matter of time before they do go and do that. And and if you go back to Aura Singh, again, it's a character with a fairly blank slate at this point. Her Her origins are vague. And her history is even more vague, and that's kind of fun. And, and you know, we talked a little bit about it. Well, you'll hear it in a, in a couple weeks on the show how sometimes um, it's not always great when you have the the mystery aspect of a character taken away. Uh, but I think ours ours blank enough that even if you don't you don't do like a full blown origin story, just like hints and whispers and things like that, I think it does the, the character really really well, and uh, it could be a big benefit. In the long run, to, to give her a little bit more of a backstory. Well, you know, why not? Why the heck not? There's there's such... And, and again, we are we are in a period where we're seeing a lot of things incorporated from the old canon. Why not pull some, some prime juicy pieces out for Aura if you want to focus on, on her history and, and give her a little bit more to do? Whenever the timeline focuses back to the Clone Wars, and maybe we'll get more... Maybe we'll get more stuff out of her... During the, the the Kenobi show, maybe we'll find out uh, something interesting about her. Maybe she'll pop up on that show. That could be a lot of fun, too. We will just have to wait and see. It'll probably be one of those mysterious trailers that drops when I'm on vacation, and I can't talk about it for two weeks. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. All right, I think that's going to be the episode for this week. I think that's our, our Friday show. In the lieu of, in lieu of Bad Batch Friday, we have the Aura sing-along for this Friday, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, listening about this character, and I hope you have some thoughts on Ara Singh. And you, what's your preference? Do you like the old stuff? Do you uh, do you like her as more of a mysterious blank slate? Let me know what you think. You know where to find me. Reach out. It's at Mando underscore Vision Twitter and Instagram. You can email the show MandoVisionTom at gmail dot com. Be sure to like again. Uh, once again, like, subscribe, and share the show with all the other Mandalorians in your covert, and if possible, show inclined. Five star reviews help the show so so much and we thank you thank you thank you for doing so in advance all right i want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to the the aura sing along the aura sing song along depending on which version of that name you like better is the one 
that uh, I'll, I'll call it on from now on. You just let me know. <laughs> Let's get out of here. You got a big, you got, you got the the Boba Fett trilogy coming up on Monday. Get excited! We're closing out the Clone Wars in style, and with any luck, you'll have more bonus episodes on Friday to keep you not bonus episodes, but you know, Bad Batch Fridays is, is going to continue just with new themes. So hopefully, we'll keep those rolling on for you as well. You will be getting at least one show a week though while I am out of town, but I'm hoping that I can get a few more in the bank so you have some Friday episodes as well. I got a few plans in place. We just got to make them happen. All right, that being said, this is the MandoVision Podcast. My name is Tom, Nargai Tom. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the support. New listeners, thank you for coming to check us out. We truly, truly appreciate it, and we hope you stick around. Old listeners, welcome back. Thanks for being here, and thank you for the continued support. It, it, it all just means the world to me, and I wouldn't be here without you all. Let's go on. Ooh, ooh, that was not good. Let's go on. Let's get out of here. Go have a great weekend. Have some fun. Watch some Star Wars. Go Google Aura Singh. <laughs> that sounded weird. But you can you can find her history on the internet. Go read up more stuff about Aura Singh. Fascinating character. Particularly her old Expanded Universe stuff that's no longer considered canon. There's some interesting stuff in there for sure. Uh, particularly, actually I didn't even talk about it, but the can- the old canon, the no longer canon, the Expanded Universe stuff that doesn't count anymore, a great sequence of her uh, watching Anakin at the Padres, at the Bunti of Padres, and discussing uh, him not cheating. He can use the Force. She can tell he's Force-sensitive and how it's, it's sort of helping him with the reflexes, the quicker reflexes in, in anticipation. But he's not cheating in a race with no rules and what that says about Anakin Skywalker. Uh, and they will have confrontations in the comic books and, and that there's some interesting stuff there too. Not Nothing, nothing uh, crazy though. Let's not, let's, not, let's not lose our heads, all right? <laughs> But yeah, again, there, there's so much stuff in that old continuity and that old canon with Ara Singh that it's definitely worth investigating, worth checking out. So by all means, if you have the time and the inclination, go look her up. She's uh, yeah, under in the phone book under A, maybe under S. Look her up, hit her up. That was stupid. I'm getting out of here. Let's get out of here. I will talk to you all very very soon. Well, maybe not me directly, but there are a podcast coming out. They will not stop. And I will talk to you all very, very soon. Take care of each other. The podcast can only end one way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession.